Hello there, my name's Andy, I'm Technique Editor for Digital Photo Magazine and welcome to this video tutorial in which I'm going to be showing you how to take a bog standard cityscape shot like this and turn it into something a little bit more special like this by creating your own virtual sun in Photoshop or Elements. Okay, let's kick off by closing down these two images. Navigate to the Start Images folder and then double click on Sunrise. That'll open up into Photoshop and if you hit Control and Zero, you'll be able to make that fit the window. You're going to need to make sure that you can see your Layers panel, so go into Window and make sure that Layers is ticked. And this is the Layers panel here on the right hand side. OK, so the first thing to do is to create a new layer. We'll do that by hitting Shift, Control, Alt and N. Or you can do it by clicking once on this icon at the bottom of the Layers panel. Once we've got that open, we'll activate the Brush tool. And there's our Brush tool activated. Uh, go into the settings and make sure that the hardness is set to 30% and then double click on your foreground color and in the color picker that opens up we're going to enter a hex value for our color which is next to this hash here so highlight those zeros and type in 684E0F once you've done that click OK and then make your brush size big enough to be a naturally sized sun by hitting the left and right square bracket keys until you've got a ball shape that looks about right for a sun and now I'm going to click a few times in this layer to create a soft circle. So let's go one, two, three. That looks about right to me. Three clicks. Now we'll make another new layer with Shift, Control, Alt and N. And we'll increase the brush hardness this time to 80%. So go back to those options and drag that slider up to 80. I'll make my brush a little bit smaller by hitting the left square bracket key once. And then I'll click once more in that same spot with the same color just inside the circle I already have. And there we have it. Now it doesn't look like much at the moment, but here's where the magic happens. Select the lower of those two layers, layer one, and change the blending mode from normal to screen by clicking on where it says normal and selecting screen from the drop-down menu. And then click on the top one and click on where it says normal. And this time from that menu, select color dodge. And there we have a fairly realistic looking sun. So let me show you what these two layers are doing. The bottom layer alone is a sort of a soft diffuse glow like that. And once I add the top layer, I've got that hard circle. If I turn the bottom layer off, you'll see that glow vanishes and it looks a bit less natural. But if we turn it back on, it's a nice glow around the sun and things look a lot more realistic. OK, now we're going to create some rays of light emanating from this sun. So to do that, we'll create another new layer. We'll click on this icon here to create a new layer called Layer 3. And we'll select the Polygonal Lasso tool, which is up here. And if I hover over it, you'll see that the keyboard shortcut is L. Every time you click with this tool, you're creating a new endpoint in a line segment. So I'm going to click in the center of the sun to make sure that all of these lines are emanating from the exact middle and then drag up outside of the frame. Click once there, I've created a line segment. Click once there, that's another line segment and then go back to the start. And when you see that little circle appear next to your cursor, that means that you're about to close the shape. So you click once and now we've got a sort of triangular selection. Now the beauty of this tool is if you hold down the shift key, you'll see a little plus icon appear, and that means you can add more to that selection. So I'm going to add more triangles to this. Click once in the center, and then again outside the image, and then back to the center. And that has created another triangle. I'm going to keep varying the width of these triangles that I'm creating, so they're not all exactly the same. OK, I've got six triangles there. That looks pretty good to me. Now what I want to do is fill those. So I'll go to Edit, Fill, and from this drop-down menu, we'll select Color. So here in the color picker, I want to select a fairly pale yellow color. I'm going to highlight this text here and input FDEFB9 as my color, which is a fairly pale yellow. And then I'll click OK. And once again, click OK to fill those triangles with my pale yellow. OK, it's not looking exactly natural yet, but don't worry, there's more steps to come. We'll hit Control and D to deselect that selection or dismiss that selection. And then we'll go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And in there, we'll input a pixel radius of somewhere around 60 pixels and then click OK. Now things are looking a bit softer. Next step is to change the blending mode from normal to overlay. And things are looking a little bit better still, but they're not ideal yet. So let's drop that opacity down to 40%. Let's make that effect a little bit softer. 
that's good, but they're still a little bit too long. So let's try and delete the edges and keep the middle intact. We can do that fairly easily by hitting this icon, which is the create a new layer mask icon. This white rectangle next to our layer is a layer mask, and this is used for hiding pixels on this layer. Anything in white will be shown, and anything that's black will be hidden. So how do we hide the outside? Well, we go to our gradient tool and click once there. Next, hit D on your keyboard to return your foreground and background colors to their default values of white and black respectively. Then click on this little triangle here, and from the template, select the first one, which is the foreground to background template. Click on that once and then close the menu by clicking outside it somewhere, and then make sure that radial gradient is selected. Make sure that the mode is on normal, opacity is 100%, reverse is unticked and it doesn't matter about transparency in this case because we're not using a transparent gradient we're using two colors white and black okay so all we have to do is click inside the sun and then drag towards the edge of the image and when we let go of the mouse you can see in the mask that the outside has become black so those pixels are being hidden and the inside is white so those pixels are being shown so you can restrict that as much as you like for example if i draw a very short line then I'm restricting those sun rays to a very short value. I'll click Ctrl and Z there to leave it as it was. That looks pretty good to me. It's a little on the long side. Maybe I'll just draw another gradient like that. And now I've got a little bit of sun ray there, but it's not stretching all the way to the edge of the frame. That looks a bit better to me. I'll turn that layer off and on, and you can see the difference we've made. Next up, we're going to introduce some lens flare in that region. So let's create another new layer by clicking on that icon or by hitting Shift, Control, Alt and N on your keyboard. And then we want to fill this with black. I'll show you a keyboard shortcut for doing that. First, press D to return your foreground and background colors to their defaults of black and white. And then hit Alt and Backspace to fill that blank layer with your foreground color, which was black. Okay, now we've got a black layer. Unfortunately, we can't see anything. So let's change the blending mode from normal to screen. And what screen does is hides any dark or black portions of the frame, and it shows any light or white portions of the frame. So at the moment, there are no white pixels in there, which is why we can't see anything. So let's introduce some bright pixels. We'll go up to filter, render, and then lens flare. Now we want to try and guess where this lens flare is in relation to this frame. So I can see that my sun is about halfway down the frame, it's almost exactly halfway through the frame, and it's a couple of inches from the left-hand edge. So I'm going to drag that little cross there until it's roughly in the same spot, halfway down, a little way from the edge. I'm guessing somewhere around here is probably good. And I've got my brightness at 100% and I've got my lens type at 50 to 300 millimeters zoom. I'm going to click OK there to create the lens flare. And I was pretty close. I was a little bit too far to the left. So let's activate the move tool here, which you can do by clicking on this icon or pressing the V key on your keyboard. And then I'll just drag that up until it's sitting right on top of the sun. That's not bad. Now, as you can see, there's a fairly ugly edge that's become visible here. So there's a couple of things we can do. We can either activate our eraser tool make that a little bit larger and make sure that its hardness is set to 0% so it's nice and soft and we can start to paint out that hard edge like so and to be honest that doesn't look too bad at all but another option is to hit Control alt z once to undo that Control alt z again to undo the move Control alt z again to undo the lens flare and then i'll go back to filter render lens flare and i'll simply move that little cross a little bit further to the right until it's sitting a little bit closer to where the sun should be. I'll hit OK again. Oh, I was very close that time. OK, let's activate that move tool, drag that up a little bit, and there we have it. If you wanted to, you could refine that edge, as I mentioned, by activating your eraser tool, which is E on your keyboard, and then just brushing over that harsh edge. So now what we've got is a lens flare at the top, and then we've got our sun rays below that, and then we've got our virtual sun below that. Things are starting to look a lot better, but there are a couple more steps, so let's keep going. We'll create a new layer by clicking on that icon again. Activate our brush tool again by clicking here. Double click on the foreground color there and enter a hex value of F3E4BB, and that's a nice pale orange color, and then click OK. Now make your brush nice and large. Make sure that the hardness is set all the way down at zero, 
and click outside that menu and make the brush nice and large because now we're going to create some haze. We want to reduce the contrast and sort of obscure the picture slightly in this area because when you shoot into the sun you tend to get a bit of haze in your shot. So with a nice big brush like this click once on that new layer and there we have a nice hazy yellow color. I think I'm going to click a couple more times make it a little bit stronger and more prominent. One, two, okay that looks pretty good to me. Now unfortunately it's obscuring the sun so we'll need to do something about that. Let's go over here to the blending mode and click on where it says normal and from that drop down menu select screen. Okay now the sun is shining through that haze a little bit but it's a little bit too strong it's obscuring all of the work we've done so far so let's drop that opacity down to say 30%. Okay, things are really starting to come together, but finally I think I'd like to warm this photo up a little bit more. So let's go down to that Create New Fill or Adjustment Layer icon once again, and from the menu we'll select Photo Filter. We'll change the filter type from Warming Filter 85 to Orange, and then we'll increase the density all the way up to 90%, so it's very, very strong. That looks good, and now we'll create another new photo filter. So back to the Create New Fill or Adjustment Layer icon, click on Photo Filter once again, and this time from that drop down menu, we'll select Deep Yellow, and I'll just nudge the density up to 30%, and that's looking really warm now. I'll close this Properties dialog box and take a look at it. Now, I think the shape of my sun is being obscured slightly by that lens flare, which is a little too strong. So I'm going to select the lens flare layer, which is this one, layer 4, and I'm just going to drop the opacity down to 50%. And when I do that, I can see a little bit more of my sun, but over here on the right side, I've still got a nice little bit of lens flare, which is subtly visible, but not overpowering. And there we have our completed effect. So let's hold down the Alt key and click on the background layer. So we've gone from this shot, which is nice enough, but nothing spectacular, to this, which is much warmer, much more spectacular, and frankly more memorable. So I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial. Remember that this effect, the virtual sun, can be placed in any shot with the sky visible. It could be a portrait shot, it could be a pet portrait, it could be an architectural shot. Try it on a range of different subjects, and when you've got a shot you like, be sure to upload it to our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash digital photo UK. The Digital Photo staff keep an eye on that page and we see everything you upload there. And even better, your peers will also be able to see, like and comment on your images if you upload them there. So, I look forward to seeing your shots. That's all for this video. I'll speak to you again next time. Bye bye for now.